Do you want a simple way to draw reflections and kaleidoscope style rotations in open tunes? Well stay tuned, as that's what we will look at today. Hello friends and welcome to today's video, which is a bit of fun using the animation tool to create a mirrored or kaleidoscope drawing. And as always, if you're new here, my name's Darren T, and on this channel I release new OpenTunes tutorials, news videos and animations weekly. So subscribe to not miss them and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. And if you're interested in animating with OpenTunes, check out the other videos on my channel. So the first thing to do is to create a level, and this works with any level, but I'll use a Toon Traster level today. And the principle behind all of the effects in today's video is that you copy the drawing, and paste it into another column, and then apply an animation translation to it. So you might choose mirroring, rotation, or scale. So at the minute we've got the same drawing in two columns. So if I go to the first column, I just start drawing, and you'll see no change because the two drawings are in exactly the same place. So all we need to do is to choose the animation tool and in one of the columns apply a translation. So to apply a basic mirror all we need to do is to change the horizontal from 100% to minus 100% by typing in and then when you press enter you'll see that column 2 is showing the drawing mirrored to the right. And of course this isn't shown in the preview at the top of the column as the drawing actually is still drawn to the left. And if we go back to column 1, you'll see that the actual mirror point between the two drawings is at the very centre of the drawing. And you'll notice here that sometimes the display doesn't update immediately, so if you change frames, and then back to the same frame, you can see the mirrored version. And often what you want to do is to drop a line from the ruler to show where the mirror is. In this case it's the very centre, so it's not necessarily needed. OK, so I'll just delete these scribbles, and to demonstrate, I'll just draw a pretty little butterfly. Well, a butterfly anyway. So the first thing I'll do is I'll put a lock on column 2, so I don't accidentally draw in that column, and I'll make sure I'm always drawing in column 1. So let's draw this butterfly. OK, so there's the basic line work done, so now I'll just add a little bit of colour. Okay, so here you can see the first problem with mirroring, and that's that we can't fill in this centre area. And the reason being is this isn't an enclosed shape. Even though it looks it, remember it's still just two drawings on two different columns. So if I hide column 2, you'll see that that is all the drawing is. If you try to fill in the body, you'll see that it can't, and it fills in the whole screen. And the first one is simply to use the paintbrush tool, and to paint in the background, on one of the columns. Another way is to treat these two columns as line art and create yourself a drawing in the third column which you can place behind and in that column do all of the colouring. So again you use the paintbrush tool and then we choose to do the colouring in there. So this first column now only contains the paint that I've just put into the drawing. And if you don't want to see multiple columns for this drawing, you can always collapse them into a single sub-X sheet, so that you only see the one column. And it's especially useful if you've got a few mirrors or rotations. And to do that, you select the first column, hold shift, select the final column, right click and choose collapse. And now we've got a single column with a butterfly, and we can apply simple animations and movements to. So we can scale down the whole thing here, and change its position. And if you want to edit it again, you can simply click on the cell and then press the button to step into the sub -X sheet. So that's how you can use mirroring in another column to create an exact mirror of what you've drawn to create a single image for multiple images. And it's especially useful if you've got a few columns showing mirrors or rotations. And speaking of which, mirroring isn't the only translation you can use this method for. You can use any of the animation tools translations. So for instance, you can rotate the drawings to create a kaleidoscope effect. So let's do that now. So again, I'll add a new Toons raster level, but you can choose any level type. And I'll copy the one drawing into the other column. But this time, instead of choosing to flip on the horizontal, I'll rotate the second drawing. So on the second drawing, I'll choose the animation tool. I'll change to rotation. 
and what I want to create in this drawing is a stained glass effect. And I'm going to do this in quarters, so I want to rotate each quarter 90 degrees. So to do that I'll type 90 degrees into the rotation, and to make it move clockwise I simply put minus 90 degrees. So if I draw it in the first drawing, you see how the duplicate is rotated 90 degrees. So I'll copy this drawing two more times into two new columns and I'll set their rotations to be minus 180 and minus 270 and that's the four quarters set up. So now that's set up you can just start drawing. So again the first thing you want to do is to lock the duplicate columns and make sure you're working into the same column each time and then I'll erase what I've already added and then start drawing. So the first thing I'll draw is a frame on a separate level. So that's so it doesn't get rotated by the other columns and end up off center. And I can always move it later to complete the drawing. Okay, so let's get started. So there we go, all coloured in. So again, what I'd probably do would be to highlight all the columns, right click and then choose collapse. And then I've got all of the drawing in a single column and then you can place that stained glass window into the building wherever it is on the screen. So as I said earlier, there's two ways you can use this repeating pattern. One, you can just leave the extra column showing the repeated drawing as I've done so far or you can use the repetition as a template to draw over. And this means that the drawing won't look so mechanically repeated or flipped, so you'll have the drawing on a single layer without having to collapse lots of columns to a single sub -X sheet. Let me show you two quick uses for this. So we'll do the same as before and add a 200 raster level. Again, you can use any level type you choose. Now I'll copy that drawing into a separate column. And for this example, I'll flip the drawing. So again, we change the scale and put minus 100% to flip from left to right. And I'll label the columns so we can see clearly what they are. The first column being for the drawing and the second one being the template. So on the drawing level, I'll draw a simple character. And you can see the reflection of him on the right. And this time, instead of using the drawing on the right, what we'll do is we'll use that as a template to trace over. And to make sure we don't accidentally draw in the wrong column, because we want the drawing all in one column, we'll lock the column so it can't be drawn over. We'll turn off the preview visibility so it doesn't appear in the final output. And I change the transparency so it's faded, and then change the colour so it's quite clear that it's a different image. And then when we come back to the first drawing, we can use the placement of everything in the drawing as a reference to draw the new altered drawing. So let me show you. So now you can turn off your template column and you can see all of the drawing in one column but each face is aligned and spaced out perfectly. So for instance in this image I'm imagining a person looking into the mirror and seeing a different version of themselves. So you can imagine using this in a horror animation where a person turns into a monster or they've got an alternate side that they see when they look into a mirror. And this will be especially useful for the animation to keep the heads in sync or to keep the mouth in sync if they're talking to themselves or shouting. Finally, I'll do another quick example but we'll flip the image vertically. So again, I'll add a new level. I'll copy the drawing to a separate column. And in this separate column, I'll change the scale this time vertically, minus 100%. I'll take it out of the preview, I'll add a red filter, and I'll bring down the transparency, and lock the column again so we can't accidentally draw in the wrong column. Okay, so I've drawn a very simple outdoor scene here, with mountains, a log cabin and some trees, and a reflection showing in the lake. Now I've done this for a few different reasons. The first one is for reflections, you often don't want the height of the reflection to match the height of the actual drawing. So if we unlock the template column and go to the animate tool and then change the scale 
And we want to change the vertical, and instead of being 100%, we click and drag on the V, we can make the number smaller until it looks right. So maybe about there. So let's lock that column again. And now we can simply trace the reflection, but also add some movement in the water. OK, so there's a very simple sketch drawing just to show how you can use the reflection as a template for drawing the main drawing. You haven't got to follow it exactly, and for a lot of drawings you won't want to. you want to add your own spin onto it. But in this case, if the water is crystal clear and really still, you might be better off using the actual reflection and just adding an effect to desaturate the colours. But if you want the hand-drawn look, or you want to make the reflection less accurate, then this might be the technique for you. So that's how you can use reflection and rotation with the animation tool to help with your drawings and animations. And if you found that useful, why not subscribe for more drawing and animation tips with Open Tunes every Friday. And I'll see you next Friday for another. And that's a guarantee.